So, Dr. Delroyth, we've talked about the basis of type 2 diabetes, how it's a insulin resistance, obesity, metabolic problem. Um, who's predisposed to that? You mentioned there are genetic uh, components to it. Are there other aspects that make someone more likely to get type 2 diabetes? If you look at the family history and you look at the grandparents, the parents, the uncles and aunts, the, and, and the siblings, you'll find that in many of these families, there's much more diabetes than in other families that don't have diabetes. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a genetic component. We've also found, researchers have found, that there are about 70 or 80 genes that are abnormal that could play a role in developing diabetes. Mm -hmm. But each of them has a very small effect. Mm -hmm. And so we don't really know which gene or genes are really driving this diabetic epidemic. Mm -hmm. But we know that there are some genes that are in fact abnormal. Mm -hmm. And I presume, and we presume, that if you have 20 of these minor gene defects, that could give you this component of diabetes. Mm -hmm. So it's a cumulative effect of multiple gene changes. Right. Um, and are we able to, to know, from the, besides looking at family history, are there any age groups or ethnic groups or environmental issues that might predispose someone to diabetes? Well, we know that there's certain um, ethnic groups, for example, in America, the Pima Indians uh -huh. in the southwest of the country are very prone to obesity and very prone to diabetes. So there are, uh, and also in some of the islands in the Pacific, where the degree of diabetes is much worse than other communities. Mm -hmm. In our area in New York, for example, we have um, on the Upper East Side and West Side, we have Spanish Harlem and African American Harlem. And if you compare the level of obesity and diabetes compared to Manhattan below that level, where Caucasians are eating well, are exercising, their lifestyle is better, mm -hmm. the African American Spanish Harlem individuals have tenfold obesity and probably fivefold diabetes. Mm -hmm. So we can find communities where they're much more prone to diabetes and obesity and those communities where it's less common. Fascinating, Dr. Leroyth. So what you're saying is that there are certain social, economic, uh, geographic groups that get diabetes more than other groups and you were describing a lot of genetic influences, but also that there's a significant lifestyle influence uh, of who gets diabetes. Could you speak a bit more about the lifestyle factors that sure. might contribute to that? So we always consider type 2 diabetes as being two etiologies. One is genetic and one is environment. You need to be predisposed genetically, but you then need to have the influence of the environment. The best example which I mentioned are the Pima Indians mm. who have 100% obesity. On the other hand, they only have 50% type 2 diabetes, suggesting that those that have the genetic predisposition and then develop the obesity are likely to become diabetic. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, we have shown, people have shown that over 100 years, they've gone from farmers to eating a Western American diet, uh -huh. and so obesity has gone from 5% to 100%, uh -huh. but only 50% become diabetic. Mm. So it is a two-fold disease, it's genetic and environment. Mm. And the environment in generally, we discuss, is lifestyle change. Mm. The types of foods, the obesity that's developing, the lack of exercise, uh, this has led to this increase in obesity, which is driving the type 2 diabetic epidemic. Mm. And uh, simple examples, especially childhood obesity, is a major problem because that leads to adult obesity. Mm -hmm. And all of the uh, changes that occur during childhood remain in the adulthood. Very hard to re-educate in the adulthood mm -hmm. if the child has already become prone to eating certain foods mm -hmm. and not exercising. And in New York City, where we uh, have an ongoing battle, one of the problems is physical exercise is not part of the school curriculum. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So this is what we need to change. Very interesting. So it sounds like what you're saying is that the genetics we can't change, 
the environmental stuff, the exercise, the diet, are things that can be very hard to change, especially if there's ingrained habits, but there's potential there, and there's yes. things that we could potentially work on. That's correct. So that's encouraging. 